Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the breast, also called mammary gland. Mammary gland is present in both the male and the female, but it is well developed in female after puberty. Mammary glands are modified sweat glands. They are located in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. So, the mammary glands or breast are modified, modified sweat glands. So it is also called memory gland, memory gland. These are modified sweat glands. Location, they are located, located in the pectoral region from second rib to the sixth rib. So, this is the breast and from here to here, this is second rib, this is sixth rib, vertically from second rib to sixth rib. From side to side, from side to side the breast extends from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line the breast extends from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line. So we got the extension of the breast above downward from second rib to sixth rib. From side to side from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line. Okay, we got the extension. The breast or mammary glands are hemispherical in shape. The size of the breast depends on the age, the functional level, the lactation, lactation status, parity ethnic background, also hereditary factors. We'll go to the deep relationship of the breast. So what structures are related deep to the breast? So deep relations. The breast is located in the pectoral region in the subcutaneous tissue over the pectoral fascia. Pectoral fascia covers the pectoralis major. So deep to the breast, we have the pectoralis major muscle. Partly we'll get serratus anterior muscle will get external oblique muscle. These muscles are related deep to the breast or posterior surface of the breast. So, pectoral fascia separates the pectoralis major from the breast. There is there are some loose irregular tissue behind the breast 
that forms the retro memory space. So the retro memory space. is formed by the loose areolar tissue areolar tissue this space or the loose areolar tissue separates the posterior aspect of the breast from the pectoral fascia and due to retro memory space it is also called retro memory bursa Due to this retro memory space or bursa, the breast can be moved above downward from side to side. Okay, so we got the retro memory space or retro memory bursa. The extension of the breast, we have breast, its extension goes to the axilla towards the towards the apex of the axilla. This is called axillary, axillary pain of spans. So, the upper and outer part of the breast extend towards the apex of the axilla and we call it axillary pain of spans. And it goes through a foramen in the deep fascia called foramen of Langer. Foramen of Langer. Okay, we got that. Our breast, both male and female, this is a gland, modified sweat gland. Like other gland, it has two parts. One is stroma, another one is the parenchymatous part and it is covered by the skin. So we have skin, parenchyma, skin covering the breast, parenchyma or the part which produce milk in a lactating mouth and stroma that is composed of connective tissue supported by plenty of fat so it is connective tissue tissue plus we get plenty of fat or adipose tissue okay the skin of the breast has two important point of important points we have the nipple almost in the center of the breast nipple nipple is surrounded by areola the color of the areola depends on the racial background of the individual especially the female also the male this color vary depending on the complexion of the person his or her racial background nipple is conical part the center of the breast nipple contains smooth muscles muscles and it con it is the it has multiple opening for the lactiferous duct openings for the lactiferous ducts and it is very much richly supplied by nerve so it has nice or good nerve supply so we have free nerve endings free nerve endings okay so nipple contains smooth muscle opening for the lactic duct and free in our bendings and nipple area does not contain fat, does not contain sweat glands. The dermatome over the nipple 
and surrounding part of the skin, the areola. Okay. So the dermatum, dermatum of the nipple is T4. We know that dermatum is the specific area of the skin getting picking up sensory innervation and it is it is defined by particular segment of the spinal cord. So dermatum of the nipple is T4. Location of the nipple location of the nipple is variable depending on the sex function size age of the individual dermatum is t4 both male and female at any age any side of the breast dermatum is always fixed okay we got that uh, the breast is a gland these are modified sweat glands and it is composed of parenchyma and the stroma covered by the skin okay so if we give emphasis in the stroma stroma is composed of connective tissue connective tissue and from the stroma we we'll get the suspensory ligament of the breast suspensory ligament ligament of Cooper okay these are connective tissue thickening that connects the dermis of the breast and the lectiferous duct to the pectoral fascia these are thickening of the connective tissue connective tissue connecting the dermis of the skin dermis of the skin over the breast skin over the breast and lectiferous duct lectiferous duct to the pectoral fascia pectoral fascia okay we got the ligament of cooper that is formed by the stromal connective tissue okay. now we go through the blood supply of the breast breast is located in the pectoral region so if we just think what artery are close to the breast then we can get the blood supply breast is getting blood supply from the internal thoracic arteries so blood supply of the mammary gland or breast is from internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery by means of perforating branches from the axillary artery superior thoracic artery superior thoracic artery acromioclavicular artery acromioclavicular artery lateral thoracic artery these are branches of the axillary artery thoracic artery okay from the anterior and posterior intercostal artery anterior and posterior intercostal artery artery second to sixth okay we got the blood supply the
the artery on supply, internal thoracic artery, superior thoracic artery, or acromioclavicular artery. Okay, we can call it thoracoacromial artery, thoracoacromial artery. Okay, this thoracoacromial artery, lateral thoracic artery, anterior posterior intracostal arteries. Okay, venous drainage, like that of the artery, internal thoracic artery, anterior posterior posterior intracostal the venous venous going to the internal thoracic vein anterior posterior intracostal vein to the axillary veins so like the arteries okay posterior intracostal vein will go to the azygo system of vein and those veins are connected to the veins inside the body of the thoracic vertebra that has some clinical importance Okay, we got that the blood supply will go to the nerve supply of the mammary gland. Nerve supply, nerve supply from the fourth, fifth, and sixth intercostal nerve, fourth, fifth, and sixth intercostal nerve. Okay. These nerves contains contains the sensory fibers and also post ganglionic sympathetic fibers the gland and smooth muscles. The sympathetic fiber reaches the intercostal nerve through the rami communicants. Okay, we got the arterial supply, vena supply, and nerve supply of the breast will go to the lymphatic drainage. Okay. Lymphatic drainage of the mammary gland. We have two sets of lymph lymphatic vessels, superficial and deep, and we have multiple lymph nodes. From the breast, lymph, around 75% of lymph are drained to the axillary lymph nodes. Okay, that's why it is so important. In case of self breast examination, to look to palpate any type of lymph node enlargement in the axilla. So, axillary lymph nodes are arranged anterior, posterior, lateral, central, axillary group of lymph nodes. Most of the lymph node goes to the anterior group of the axillary lymph node. Okay, from the axillary lymph node, we have the lymph node here, the apical lymph nodes, apical lymph nodes, okay, apical lymph nodes, supraclavicular lymph nodes, clavicular lymph nodes, lymph nodes. We have parasternal lymph nodes here, parasternal lymph nodes, parasternal lymph nodes, parasternal lymph nodes. The lymph node from the undersurface of the breast, especially in the inferior part, may go to the abdomen, bypass in the costal margin and linear elba may, connect, may be connected to the subphrenic or abdominal lymph nodes. So, so lymph node may go to the abdomen, 
you can call it subphrenic subphrenic lymph nodes okay so we have multiple lymph lymphatic lymph nodes ultimately they will be connected together supraclavicular lymph node will unite with that of the subclavian lymph node may be connected to the internal jugular lymph node may open on the right side to the right lymphatic duct on the left side to the thoracic duct the junction between the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein the venous angle okay so lymph ultimately drains into the venous system to the venous angle the junction between the internal jugular vein and subclavian vein okay we have gone through the lymphatic drainage now we go to the development of the breast okay the development is from the midline midline or mid crest or ribs okay that is formed during the fourth week of intrauterine life extending from the axilla to the inguinal region okay so fourth intrauterine life extending from the axilla to the to the inguinal region okay in human this line will disappear it will only confined to the pectoral region in the pectoral region so we'll get breast in the pectoral region in the pectoral region okay so line pectoral region how this happened in the seventh week of intrauterine life seventh week of intrauterine life intrauterine life what happens in the pectoral region from the midline there will be memory bars memory bars from the memory bars from the memory bars there will be development of lactiferous ducts lactiferous ducts these are ectodermal this is ectodermal this line, line of schools, milk line, milk press, also called line of schools. Okay, same thing, line of schools, milk line, milk press. These are ectodermal. Okay, that will be buried in the embryonic connective tissue called mesenchyme from mesenchyme we get the stroma stroma and the stroma is mesodermal the stroma is mesodermal mesodermal so the lactiferous duct is ectodermal the stroma is mesodermal okay we got that the development of the breast okay in male it is rudimentary in female it is de well developed after puberty the main purpose of the breast is to nourish the baby with milk okay we have done the development now we learn some of the congenital anomalies congenital anomalies okay so congenital
environmental anomalies, what may happen? We may have supernumerary press. Okay, we may have supernumerary press. Maybe in the axilla. Maybe just underneath the normal press. So we call it polymestia. Okay, this is super pneumatic breast. This breast tissue undergo changes during pregnancy. Even lactation is also possible. May not be the same size as that of the as that of the this will develop breast, but this may also lactate during 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 the childbirth after the after the delivery of the baby. Okay, this may be functional. Okay, but small in size, maybe in the axilla, maybe underneath the the breast. Okay, we may have a mastia. We may have a mastia. A mestia. This is a condition when no breast is developed. It may be bilateral, it may be unilateral. Polythelia. Polythelia is a condition. We have multiple nipples. Multiple nipples. And this may be present both male and female along the line of scourge or the milk line anywhere we may have nipple okay we call it polythelia and sometimes the patient or person may think this is a mole but this is not a mole this is a this is a a nipple okay but nipple usually not not a functional breast but nipple. Okay, we got the polythelia. We may have athelia, no nipple. Athelia, no nipple. This is also possible. Okay, we got the congenital anomalies of the breast. Okay, during development, we have the formation of lactiferous duct. And each lactifrasta forms a lobe. This is a lobe for the breast. Lactifrasta forms a lobe. Okay. So one lactifrasta, lactifrasta for one lobe of the breast. One lobe of the breast. So in a breast nearly 15 to 20 lactiferous duct, lactiferous duct. So they are like the spokes of bicycle, like the spokes of bicycle, bicycle. They are independent. The lactiferous duct are not connected to one another. Each lactiferous duct will open into the nipple. It is small opening, very small opening. Okay. So lactiferous duct has a dilatation near its termination. We call it lactiferous sinus. Lactiferous sinus. So an adult breast has 15 to 20 lobes. Each lobe has one lactiferous duct. And the termination of lactiferous duct near the nipple, lactiferous sinus, this is act, this, this will act as a reservoir of milk. And lactiferous duct has multiple ductules, ductules, okay. And this duct, these are the duct system and in lactating breast, also in the later half of pregnancy, 
makes the small ductule have alveoli alveoli okay we we'll get alveoli and they will form lobule from lobule will get the terminal duct lobule here interlobular duct terminal duct lobule and we will get the lactiferous duct lactiferous duct okay we got the lactiferous duct so milk is produced from the alveoli okay these are the alveoli alveoli alveolar cell okay alveolar cells produce milk okay so if you draw an alveoli we'll get columnar cells especially in lactating mom okay in non lactating mom alveoli does not develop may be very small in size okay so these are columnar cells and milk is rich in protein fat carbohydrate and certainly water so fat is produced here protein is produced here so these cells are rich in endoplasmic reticulums and certainly they are very active cell during during the later half of pregnancy and during entire lactating period so they are rich in mitochondria and other organelles so the secretion of fat secretion is apocrine secretion a part of the cell membrane is lost lost so a part of cell membrane is lost okay so the secretion of protein protein is merocrine okay that is just like exocytosis okay this from there will get the ductule that will go to the terminal lobular ductule then will go to the lactiferous duct the clinical importance of the lactiferous duct and terminal lobular ductule is that almost all cancers are developed in the lining epithelium of the duct or lactiferous ducts okay milk is produced after the delivery of the baby initial milk is containing rich amount of fat and the immunoglobulin but less nutrition that is called colostrum colostrum after two or three days after the delivery of the baby then the milk for nutrition will produced in the alveoli okay so at birth especially in female newborn we may have a few drop of milk may come out we call it which which milk this may happen in the breast of the newborn due to the action of the maternal hormones but it disappears very soon okay in case of male child breast may be increased in newborn child okay but that also doesn't last long it is due to the maternal hormone to the newborn baby okay so we got the histology and production of milk okay now we'll go to the breast cancer cancer cell usually develop from the ductal epithelium this is stratified keyboard epithelium in the alveoli it is a columnar epithelium in the duct we may have keyboard epithelium so this is the site of formation of cancer so this breast cancer is typically if it develops here then it is adenocarcinoma because it develops in the glandular ducts carcinoma okay but breast cancer may develop on the skin on the nipple it is also possible to 
developed yet. Okay, so we'll go through the development of formation of breast cancer location. Okay, so location of breast cancer is very important to us. Location of breast cancer. So this is areola of the breast. It's very tail. We have to say the areola color vary from person to person depending on the racial background. And areola is also rich in some type of sebaceous gland, also sweat gland. These sebaceous glands are very prominent during pregnancy. We call it glands of Montgomery. Glands of Montgomery. This are modified modified sebaceous glands okay these glands secrete is it will secrete in the later half of pregnancy also during the lactating period idea is that it, it is a modified sebaceous gland so fatty substance will come to lubricate the areola plus the nipple so it prevents the crack in the nipple especially during lactation there is chance of crack due to lactation process it, it prevents the crack in the nipple okay so this is the areola we'll go to the location of the breast cancer okay so if we make the breast into four quadrant okay so these are the quadrant of the breast this is the site of maximum cancer formation 60 percent because we have maximum glandular tissues present here axillary tail is present here okay here we have 15 percent there is the inner this is inner and upper quadrant quadrant this is upper and outer quadrant okay this is inner and lower quadrant okay this is outer and lower quadrant outer and lower quadrant okay chances here 60 percent chances here 15 percent chances here 10 percent Chance around the nipple and the areola is another 10%. Here, chance is 5%. So, chances of getting breast cancer approximately like that. Okay, we got that. So, when there is breast cancer, we have some changes. The rectal memory space may not provide the movement to the breast. So, breast may be a little bit elevated okay so what are the signs of breast cancer we'll get orange peel appearance orange peel appearance of the skin peel appearance orange peel appearance of the skin over the breast we call it pew d orange sign why this happened this happened due to blockage of the lymphatics so the skin becomes edematous we call it pd orange sign it is a sign of cancer plus movement will be restricted because loose irregular tissue may not permit normal movement of the breast we get that we have also dimpling d 
डिम्पलिंग वाई डिम्पलिंग डिम्पलिंग ड्यू टू ड्यू टू कंट्रैक्शन एंड फर्दर थिकनिंग एब्नोमल थिकनिंग ऑफ द सस्पेंसरी लिगामेंट ऑफ द कूपर व्हिच कनेक्ट्स द डार्मिस ऑफ द ब्रेस्ट द लेक्टिफेरस टार्ट टू द पेक्टोरल फैशन so and also there will be some necrosis to the fibrous tissue that will also cause dimpling of the cancerous breast okay we got the location orange pill sign there may be there may be metastasis of breast cancer metastasis of breast cancer cancer to the subcutaneous tissue subcutaneous tissue okay okay that may happen and we call it cancer and curacy it is called cancer and and cancer and Quiresi, C U I R A S S E. So there will be woody, hard feeling on the skin of the breast due to metastasis of the cancerous tissue to the to the sub to the subcutaneous tissue, subcutaneous metastasis. What is metastasis? That is the displacement of cancerous cell. Other than the site of formation, so metastasis may be to the vertebral body. Okay, metastasis may be to the brain. Metastasis may be to the liver. Metastasis may be from one breast to the another breast because we have intermammary lymph node. that connects the parasternal lymph node of one side to the parasternal lymph node of other side <coughs> that may be possible okay so we got the metastasis there okay so we got the cancers of the breast and this is the leading cause of cancer in the female in the united states one in nine women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime okay this is very common and and devastating condition for the female especially in the united states of america then we'll get a term called gynecomastia gynecomastia okay gynecomastia what is gynecomastia gynecomastia is the large breast in the male okay let me make it simple large breast in the male okay what are the causes of gynecomastia gynecomastia has many causes it may be physiological during puberty physiological during pregnant during puberty it is also physiological at a newborn male baby okay this is physiological during puberty puberty so it will not last long there will be nodule formation in the breast in a adolescent boys then it will disappear that nodule will disappear within few months maybe within few years without any treatment but gynecomastia may be associated with other cancers like that of testicular cancer especially teratoma cancer especially teratoma of the testis okay gynecomastia may be associated in alcoholic person in alcoholism 
it may be associated with cirrhosis of liver okay gynecomastia large breast in the may may, may be due to the action of adverse effect of some drug drug like some diuretics some of the diuretics like furosemide also spironolactin okay so diuretics maybe diethyl steel based tarol diethyl steel based tarol okay that is used in case of prostate cancer okay also antipeptic ulcer drug cimetidine cimetidine this is an antipeptic ulcer drug okay so drug may also cause gynecomastia okay we got that gynecomastia is the large breast in the male okay gynecomastia may 